Hey, you did make it. I was hoping you would. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is the first weekend of November. <laughs> that time of season, I guess. Now, what I normally do on this show is to bring you a hot penny stock I found through the trading deck. But on the weekends, I'm doing something else. I'm sharing my own personal trading insights with you. Information I think can help you. And today I want to talk to you about moving averages. Now there's a lot of information and strategies out there on how to use MAs. That's not this video. We're going to keep it more fundamental, more basic. We are going to talk about what a moving average is, how to read them on the charts, and what sort of information we can get from them. Now I got a lot of information to share with you, but I've got it all laid out so I don't mess it up. I've got notes here. So if I'm not looking at you, it's because I'm looking at my notes. So don't take it personally. So what is a moving average? Well, it's those colored squiggly lines that you see on everybody's charts. The blue, the orange, the yellow, the red, those are moving averages. These are technical indicators that help us to analyze the stock's price. Now, MAs help us to identify trends, support and resistance levels, as well as potential trading signals. And we're going to cover that as we move along. In a nutshell, a moving average is the average price of the stock over a certain number of trading periods. Let me make this real clear with a simple illustration. Let's talk about the 50 MA on a five minute chart. The 50 MA is going to take 50 of those five minute bars and add them all together and then divide 50 into them to give us an average. And it's going to put a point on the chart. After five minutes, we're going to have a new bar. The last one will fall off and we have 50 new bars to consider. They will add up all 50 of those, divide by 50. We've got another average, another point on the chart. All those points create that nice smooth line. And we do this for all the MAs, 200, 50, 29, whatever number, whatever concoctions you have, it's going to work for all of them. And it does this on every time chart, all of them. So if you go to the hourly chart, the 50 MA is going to take 50 one hour bars and add them all up, divide 50 into them. There's your average on the hourly chart. You go to the one day, one year, it's going to take 50 days, add them all up, divide 50 into them, and you have your average there. All the charts have a 50 day moving average, but all of them are different because they all have different averages. So you're thinking to yourself, which one am I supposed to lean on? Which is the best one to use? Well, honestly, there's not a right or wrong answer here. It's all subjective. It's about what are you looking for? Let's say you're looking for opportunities to get in. You want to see the crossovers. You want to see trend change. You may be down there at your lower time frames, 15, 5, 1 minute. But if you want to see the overall trend, well, you can't see that on the five minute chart. She's just bouncing around. You can't tell if she's been running downhill or running uphill. So you've got to go back to the four hour or the one year, see what's going on. That'll tell you the overall trend. So it's really about what information you want to use. Now, there are more than just one type of MA. Matter of fact, there's quite a few different types of MAs out there, folks. We have Simple moving averages, which is what I just explained to you. Taking 50 bars, adding them all up, dividing 50 in it. There's your 50-day moving average, plain and simple. But there are also exponential moving averages, weighted averages, adaptive averages, and haul averages. I'm not going to go through all of those, folks. We're only going to go through two of them. Simple moving average and an exponential moving average. But now that you know about the rest, feel free to do some due diligence. So, simple moving average, you know what that is. What is an exponential moving average? Exponential is the same thing as a simple moving average with one difference. It puts more weight, more credence on current prices. So, you end up with an EMA, a moving average that is more responsive. Matter of fact, I got an example here I can show you. This right here has two MAs on it. We have a simple moving average, the blue one, and we have an exponential moving average, the orange one. We've got a price here. She's been rising. She hit a high. 
She went sideways, and then she had a big drop right here. Now, reading our simple moving average, she was climbing all the way to that drop, and at the drop, she changed direction, showing us weakness in her climb. Now, the EMA actually changed here, way down lower under this bar. This showed us something was going to happen before it happened. We could have gotten out before that big drop. So EMAs must be better than SMAs, right? And not necessarily. You could jump the gun. You could see this EMA underneath here. You see it's getting weak. You want to be safe. You want to be prudent. So you get out. Next thing you know, she bounces. Right there. Bounces and goes up. That's the problem with the MAs. They're very responsive, and it's tough to tell the difference between a dip and a fall. So you should try them. See which one feels better to you. And the best way to try it is dual charts. If you have the ability to put up two charts at once, put up one with simple moving averages and put up one with exponential moving averages. Look at them both as you're trading. You may lean on one over the other, but you may learn something by looking at the new chart. You may like it better. Now, you've probably noticed that most people use the same MAs, the red 200, the yellow 50, the orange 20, and the blue 9. Now, there may be a little variance on the blue 9 and 20, but for the most part, we're all basically using the same moving averages. These are the ones I use, and I particularly use them because everybody else is using them. The way I see it, if we're all using the same MAs, we're all looking at the same signals. So when I see a breakout on the 200 on my chart, everybody else sees it too. We all see that green light on the traffic light. So all 100 cars are going to move together. We're going to get a surge in volume. We're going to have a lot of traders coming in. And that's what we're looking for, volatility and opportunity. Now, when I'm reading the chart, looking at these MAs, sometimes I just can't get a feel for where they're going to go. Do you hear the way I put that? A feel for where they're going to go? That's because I'm a physical being. I live in a physical world. These are digital charts dealing with digital algorithms that I just can't feel. So what I've done is I've attached physical attributes to some of these things on the charts so that I can feel them and understand them better. And maybe this will help you. When I look at the 200 day MA, I see the surface line on the water. Underneath that 200, we are underwater, which is why everything moves slow. There's not a lot of power. <laughs> if we get on top of the 200, we're in the air. We can move fast. We can fly. Now, all the other MAs, the 9, the 20, and the 50, I see them as water having current. The current moves in the direction of the MAs, and the price, like a Dixie cup, moves with the current. The bigger the MA, the stronger the current. So a nine-day MA being so small might just be water coming out of a hose. Not a lot of current. Your 20-day may be a small creek. Your 50-day, a larger stream. And your 200-day MA would be a raging river. And of course, the raging river has the most current. The 200-day MA is the boss on the chart. Which is why we say the chart is in a downtrend when the 200-day MA is falling. Not any others, just the 200. And we say it's in an uptrend when the 200 MA is climbing. If we can get all of these MAs working in harmony, all going the same direction together, we get a synergy. All those currents are added up together, all go in the same direction. How strong do you think that current is? How far do you think that Dixie cup is going to go? A long ways. When you get all the MAs working together, you have strong current and you normally get strong push up or down. You've got to keep that in mind. There is no difference in both directions. Now, even though they are lagging indicators, they still give us a lot of information that we can use right now. As I was telling you, we can glean information from them like trend identification. This is very, very important, folks. Trend identification is, well, if it's rising, that's when you want to get in. 
But the MAs will tell you when it's about ready to rise. Because of crossovers, when everything is in a downtrend, your nine-day MA is down at the bottom, your 20 above it, the 50 and the 200. The nine-day has to get on top of everything for this to become a strong chart. Those are called crossovers. This is the death cross and the golden cross. Obviously, a death cross is a bad thing. Golden cross is a good thing. When you have a smaller MA cross over a bigger MA downhill, that is a death cross. You are normally going to watch the price start to fall. And if it goes through multiple bigger MAs, you've got a big problem. She's going to fall quick. When you have a smaller MA cross a bigger MA going up, that's called a golden cross. It normally is a turbo boost to the price and will help that price to rise. And when you have the nine-day cross, normally right behind it following is the 20 and the 50. They're going to cross that 200-day MA. So you're going to have a lot of golden crosses, which is going to give you a lot of extra strength and power. Got a couple more things I want to share with you here, and then we're going to go take a look at some charts. Moving averages can be supports and resistances. Most of the time they are. Now, if you're familiar with supports and resistances, you know we personally draw those lines on the chart at placements where the price likes to change directions, where it bounces, hitting the top and falling down or hitting the bottom and bouncing up. These supports and resistances are permanently placed they never move. They never get updated. They're never going to disappear. They are there forever and ever and ever. We may add some more resistances as time goes on, but these are never going to move. Our supports and resistances with MAs are dynamic because they're constantly moving. But just like regular supports and resistances, when the price is underneath an MA, it is a resistance. When the price is on top of that MA, it is a support. Again, let's attach some physical attributes to this so that you can see how much strength is necessary for a breakout. If the price is up underneath the nine-day MA, that's like having to break through balsa wood, a cracker. Very easy to break. The 20-day MA would be a piece of plywood. Definitely a lot stronger, but not that big. Then you get to your 50-day MA, which is a solid plank of wood. And then you get to your 200, which would be a 2 by 4 That's thick. So when the price comes up to each one of these, it needs more and more strength to break through, which is why you see the price bars get bigger and bigger because it needs more power to break through these things. And the last thing you need to know before we go look at these charts, the price and all of the MAs have invisible rubber bands attached to them. The price to the nine day, the nine day to the 20, the 20 to the 50, the 50 to the 200. Rubber bands can only stretch so far and then they snap back. So when the price gets too far away from the nine day MA, it could fall back to the nine day or if it's falling fast, go right through that cracker and down to the piece of plywood. If it's falling hard, it may break the plywood and stop down at the plank. And this is the way I like to think about it in my mind. When it's coming up, how much strength do I need to break through? And when it's falling and coming down fast, how much support do I need to hold it? All right, let's go take a look at some charts now. Welcome to my playground. AKA my free trading platform, Tinker Swim. Boy, do I have a lot of fun over here. I like charting. So I've already done my homework. I have got three charts picked out here, have already marked off golden crosses, death crosses, supports and resistances, and an example of ebb and flow, which I think is real important. So when we're done here, you're going to have a general idea of what the MAs look like just before the chart falls just before the chart starts to climb and where you would be thinking of getting into the stock. So let's dive on into what I got for you here and I'll try not to blab too much. So we have got a six month chart here on the one hour basis. And as you can see, she's been in an uptrend all this time. A lot of volatility bouncing around that 200. 
but we're going to focus in on this area right here. Now, we are looking at ebb and flow. What I'm talking about is that nice, gentle rolling like this you get on a biorhythm or like waves on the ocean rolling up and down. You got your flow and your ebb, your swells. That's what we're looking at here. And this will give you indications when the stock is going to fall and when the stock is going to rise. So we saw she was in an uptrend. We are continuing our uptrend right here. And we see all the signals of an uptrend. The price is on top of everything. The 200 is at the very bottom. And all the MAs are in sequential order from the smallest on the top, working their way down 20, 50, 200. Looking good. We hit a high bubble here. She starts going sideways with bounces, but she's definitely going sideways. Now she starts to break away right here and she is falling. If you look above where she has fallen, you can see our 200 haul is flat. Our 50 day MA is flat. But this is a little late. It's already fallen. Who the heck cares if those are flat? Well, back up. Let's back up some more. How about this 20 right there? The 20 is very influential, folks. In a lot of cases, when the price falls down underneath the 200 and the price is underneath everything, when the 20 finally goes level and starts to rise with the price just over it, but we're deep under the 200, you will see normally the price break the 200 and keep climbing over the 200 as the 20 is climbing towards the 200. The price will stop climbing in most cases when the 20 day MA hits the 200. Then the price stops and will come back down to the 200. So we look for the 20 to give us signals because it's very close to the nine. She is capped off here like a baseball being thrown up or a roller coaster getting to the very top and then rolling over, coming down the other side. That's what we're looking for. With your ebb and flow, you're looking for the MAs to start to crest over, and this is giving you a token sign. You then start watching for your death crosses, looking for smaller MAs to cross bigger ones. Here across the 20, eh, that's not really a death cross, nine on the 20. That happens all the time, just in bounces. But then it went over the 200. The littlest MA went over the biggest MA. That is not a good sign in any way, shape, or form. That is a bad sign. And as you can see, she took a drop from this point all the way down to here. Now, because the MAs are lagging indicators and the price already moves faster than they do, when she goes into a deep fall, She's moving way faster than the MAs. So the only way for the MAs to catch up is she has to stop falling. She has to find a floor and bide some time. She's got to go sideways, just sitting on her hands, waiting for these MAs to catch up to her. Now you can see right in this area, they finally caught up. She was flat here, right over here. Boom. Once she got on top of the 20, you can see that bar right there got a lot bigger, right? Here, you want to see that? That bar got a lot bigger because it absorbed the power of the 20-day MA. Now it's trying to get up over the 50, and it's pushing and pushing. We had a strong breakout here because all of our MA, see, our 50 is flat, our 20 is flat. No, not our 200 yet, but it only takes a couple of your MAs to go flat, and that can change the whole trend. So these were falling. Once they leveled off, the price got the weight off of her back. She was underneath everything, and then she could start climbing. And that's when she started pushing up. So look at your ebb and your flow here. Rolls over and down, back up, and again, looking at our tops of our MAs. This is starting to roll over. Now, these are way the heck over here. Look how far she's already fallen. We're way the heck down here by the time these start falling. So we're not looking for these to be our indicators. It is the 9 and the 20. When that 20 goes flat on the top, it's like the roller coaster rolling over the other side. You can count on a big drop. And when she drops, what did I just say? She drops fast, way faster than the MAs. So she has to stop dropping 
find a floor, sit on her hands and go sideways until all the MAs catch up. Not just some, all the MAs have to catch up. Our nine day is right there with her. The 20 caught up here. We had a bar jump when that got close. She went sideways, got on top of our 20, got up on top of that 50 and 200. Look at how big our bars are. She's absorbing that energy. And now everything is starting to level off, but our 200 is way up there. That's too high. She is not going to climb all the way up there in midair. She needs rungs to climb on. That's what these MAs are, rungs to climb on. So she's going to probably go sideways until that 200-day MA is close enough for her to make a jump towards. And eagerly, she will do that. But in the meantime, she's probably going to go sideways with all these MAs going flat and level and starting to turn up. And when that 200 haul, the friendly 200, turns up, it's going to push that price hard and fast to that 200. All right, let's dive down to my next chart here. This is ticker ZNTL. All right, I've got two things I want to show you on this one. One is on the four-hour chart, and one is on the five-minute. Right now, we're on the hourly chart. So let's back this up to the four-hour view, and I can see what it is I want to show you. A bunch of death crosses here. Do, 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 do. All right, let me back in. I see we've missed one there. All right, so these are our death crosses. This is when a smaller MA crosses a bigger MA. This is a token sign the price is going to fall. So we've got our nine-day MA. Our price was sitting on top of our 200, but was underneath all the MAs. We do see this. She made a bold move. The nine day went over the 200, the 20, the 50. Look at how the power is getting bigger and bigger. The bars are getting bigger and bigger. So she had a lot of power with all of these golden crosses going across these bigger MAs. Then she came down. She's bouncing off of the 50 here. Now, what did I tell you about the 20 going flat? Right there, it is going flat. And what's happening underneath? Well, our nine day just crossed the 20. Not too worried about that. But when the nine day crossed that 200 day, that was a problem. Smallest, breaking through the biggest, that is a big no-no. We're going to see a big fall. Then she went through the 50 as well. That tells me she is definitely going to fall hard. And look what happened. Look at how big that bar is. She pushed all the way down through her 200-day MA with the price. And now the price is in a serious downtrend. Now, once she got down here, she had to give time for all these MAs to catch up because every single one of them went into a death cross. All of them crossed the 200. Once one starts... The rest all follow behind. But you see how far they lagged behind. By the time the 20 crossed the 200, we were way down here. When the 200 haul crossed the 200 MA, we were way over here, days after the initial fall. So for me, watching the 20-day cap off up here at the top and watch for the 9-day to start crossing through stronger MAs, this is a good sign that the stock is going to start falling. All right, I think I had something on the five minute for you. Yes, I did. This is a great example of a trend change. We have a down trending chart because our 200 day MA is falling here. And I'm going to put a blue line right in this area here. Actually, I'm going to put two of them up. I'm going to put one right here and one right here there. We've got three different sections here. This is all downtrend. This is the flat zone. And that is the uptrend. And notice where the price is and notice where the MAs are in each section. In our downtrend, the price is underneath the 200, primarily underneath all of the MAs most of the time. But she is in a downtrend. When the 200-day levels off and starts going flat, it's showing weakness. That weakness is taken advantage of by the price. As soon as she started going flat, what happened? She jumped, immediately taking advantage of this opportunity to get up on top. 
You will rarely ever see a breakout on a falling 200 day MA. In your mind, put ice on a falling 200. If the price jumps up there, she better come right back down real fast. Because if she goes up there and tries to stand up there, she's going to trip and fall. And then she's going to come back down, but it won't come back down to her normal area. She'll fall even deeper down because she just screwed up. So you will get punch throughs up here, but not breakouts. The breakouts normally happen right as the 200 day MA goes flat and levels out. And what do we got here? Price jumps up on top. All of our MAs start shooting over it. Golden cross, golden cross, golden cross. The price is rising. Now, on your initial breakouts, you got a lot of testing going on. While your 200 is flat, the price is going to bounce up and down on it, making sure it is a real support, that it's strong, because I'm going to build on here. Once she realized it was strong, she did what I like to call a crouch and pounce. You dip underneath the strong MA like a rubber ball or a cat, and you just pounce right up from top. That rubber ball came out from the water, the cat jumped, whichever way you want to think about it. We got a nice run off of this. And what's going on? We're in an uptrend now. The price is on top of everything with the nine day right up underneath it. She is floating on it, on it. You don't want the price to get too far above the nine day because there are rubber bands between everything. She gets too far. She has to pull back. Pullbacks we have to have if she starts going too fast. Every now and then she'll drop down to a 20 and bounce off of that. That's perfect. That is exactly what we're looking for on an uptrend. You want to float on your nine day. And when you break the nine, you want to bounce on your 20. That's beautiful. When you start bouncing on your 50, that's putting a lot of pressure on the 20 because you're breaking through it. That's going to start rolling your 20 over. So when you see the price break through the 20, even that close, hitting the 50, this is a token sign that you've got more down pressure, right? It broke the 20, which is plywood, and is now trying to break the plank. Well, right there, it just broke the plank, and it's sitting on top of the 50 now, not on top of the 20. So we have a flat 20, a Death cross, there is our nine day crossing the 200. So this looks like it is about ready to fall. Third chart I want to share with you. This is, we've got to go back to the four hours so I know what it is I'm showing you. That's where I put my notes. I've got to go back to the one day, one year for this one. We are looking at a couple of different things here. We have some golden crosses and some death crosses. You can see we were flat here underneath the 200 day MA. It wasn't a downtrend, but it wasn't going anywhere, right? She was just flatlining here. Uh, let me zoom in on these arrows so you can see what's happening. These are golden crosses, folks. The price here is underneath every single MA. Now, I this is a perfect crouch and pounce. A cat crouches down just a couple inches to jump many feet up. So what we've got here is she is going sideways, not doing a whole lot of anything. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she takes this dip. Well, when I see a stock going sideways without anything bothering it, no news, I'm going to presume no news came out here. And she just all of a sudden drops and hits a low. Normally, this is a crouch. Right behind this, you see the jump. And look, our jump went all the way from that low bubble. She started crossing through every single MA to and through the 200 MA. But what I'm pointing to here is right there. We had a golden cross right there. It's our first one. The nine day went over the 200. Look at how the these bars were getting bigger and bigger. And once she got on top of the 200, that's a lot of power to suck up. She absorbs that energy from the 200 and boom, we get these huge bars. Now, because it is the first breakthrough of the 200, we normally don't expect it to keep going. It took a lot of energy to break through that two by four, right? 
Your 200 is as thick as a two by four. So it took a lot of energy to break through that. It's got to come back down. It's got to relax. It's got to refuel. So it comes back down to the 200, gets its launch on again. And now we are taking off. Now we've got a nice climb going on. Now let's back this up so you can see the death crosses. So there was our good ones. And look at the climb we had here from 52 cents up to $3.35. But this is over many months, folks, many months. But I am showing you that even on the long chart, you can get some serious growth just by reading these golden crosses. You can also know when to get out of a big drop by looking at these death crosses right there again. You have your nine-day MA crossing the 200 first. Didn't cross the 21st. It crossed the 200. Folks, whenever you see the littlest MA get on top of a big MA, the, the biggest, that's a lot of power. But when you see the littlest MA fall underneath the biggest MA, that's a lot of power being lost. She starts to fall fast. And you can see, Death cross, death cross, death cross. Every single MA got crossed here. So crossovers are the big deal here. You want to watch for these little MAs to start crossing the big MAs, the 9 and the 20. Look here. Little itty bitty bars, right? She's got up on top of the 20. Once she crossed that 50, look at how big that bar got. Pow! She's on that nine now and she's on that ride. So anytime you're nine and you're 20, start crossing bigger MAs. You know your chart is most likely going to start climbing. And whenever you see your MA start cusping up at the very top like a roller coaster before it rolls over going downhill, you should be expecting a downtrend. So we don't know for sure that anything is going to happen. Nothing is 100%, but these are token signs that you can be watching for and will show up. So now that you've got a foundation, a basic understanding of what MAs are, what they do, and how you can use them, go use them. And of course, do some more research and due diligence. You can't know too much. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.